Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. You can do many correct things, but not with a perfect heart. Like Amaziah. He did what was right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. A pure heart. The state of your heart. Write this for reference. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the full text is from verse 8 to 31. But for sake of time, I would just... Just let you have the rendition so that you learn. So the Bible talks about the woman in Shunem, the Shunammite woman, that she had a child by the word of the prophet Elisha. And then in the course of time, the child became sick and the father sent that the mother would come and nurse the child. And while he was on her lap, the child died. The Bible says the woman got her donkeys and was on her way to meet Elisha. And when she met Elisha, Gehazi met Elisha sent Gehazi to meet her on the way and he asked, are you fine? Is everything well? And she said, I'm fine. When she met the prophet, she said, I didn't ask you for a child. It was of your making. You said you would pray for me to have a child. Now the child is dead. I've come to you. And do you know what happened? Elisha gave Gehazi his rod and said, go with it at once. Don't be so distracted to greet anybody. If anyone greets you, don't even respond and go and lay that rod on the child and the child will come back to life and so Gehazi went ahead and the woman said I'm not leaving you I don't trust this your man and so he prevailed she prevailed upon him and he was going with her but Gehazi had gone ahead of them the Bible says when Gehazi went he met the child dead and he placed the rod what happened the correct rod by the correct prophet and yet it did not come back to life. Because what powers the rod is the state of your heart. The state of your heart is that battery. Like you have a clock and there is a battery behind it. You can buy a new clock. If that battery is not there, it will not work. The state of your heart. There are many people who have received impartations, oil upon oil, mantle upon mantle, but it fell dead upon a corrupted heart. Are we together? It is not just about receiving. It is about the purity of your heart. What makes your heart pure? I will tell you. The desire in your heart to see God glorified beyond making a name for yourself. That's what makes your heart pure. The moment you get to a point in your life where your entire life is all about giving God glory. Like we say in Koinonia, Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. Everything about your life is one of the biggest secrets of the life of this man standing before you. It is not necessarily because I prayed the most, fasted the most, studied the most. No. There is something about God finding a heart that is sincere towards him. That you sincerely desire to see him glorified. That was a prayer I prayed before I left coming here. I said, Lord, I'm on my way going again. The mission remains the same to see Jesus glorified people will clap they will say apostle and this but they glorify him I will tell you this once you do not walk on your heart there are things God cannot trust you with he cannot trust you with people he cannot trust you with resources he cannot trust you with opportunities you know why the answer is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8 when you read from verse 11 to 17. Lest your heart be lifted up in the presence of abundance, achievements, accomplishments. You tell yourself, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. There are many preachers who are great but cannot be used by God beyond certain realms. Do you know why? Because somewhere locked up in our hearts, that desire for a name, that desire for fame. And it's a temptation that befalls all men. You must resist it. 
Resist it. Are we together now? There are business people who cannot be used by God because the day you make your first million dollars, ten million dollars, hundred million dollars, my goodness, God will have to queue to listen to you too. I mean God. He will come and join the queue and you say, I'm busy. Who are you? King of kings, it doesn't matter. You just join the queue. Ah. Till the nations. Now you understand the song. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus. Lifted up, glorified. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. When your desire for power becomes as a tool to help the nation see Jesus, then you are ready for authority authentic genuine power when your desire for wealth is not just to flash designers and say I am this and that and that no that's too small a reason God's program is bigger than just having a good dress nothing wrong with that but if that is the circumference of your pursuit you're wasting your time as far as doing business with God is concerned forever koinonia will live to sing his praises and to let the nation see him I tell you is an intentional project to discourage anything that would just lead to the promotion of self. Thank God for Joshua Selman. But with or without me, God's program can happen. It's an honor to be part of his program. Listen very carefully. As God lifts you, you must be careful. People can clap you to your downfall. And when you fall, they will say, come and see him. We said it. The state of your heart a broken and a contrite heart a broken and a contrite heart a heart that is ready to tremble before God Lord you have given me this grace you have given me this glory but it is all yours my life belongs to you my resources belong to you the influence belongs to you the songs the preachings the everything and you let the nations know the safest position for a believer is to hide behind the cross. The safest position, hide behind the cross. The world will call you a fool, but you will last. Our obsession for celebrity living, and don't get me wrong, God is all about increasing men and giving him visibility, but the purpose is for his glory. You see that now. When it becomes about self, the marketing of self, making a name for self. Now you are behaving like Nimrod in Genesis 11. Go to let us build a city whose tower will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Let me tell you, my dear people, you never spend your life exalting Jesus and then become a nonentity. It's not true. In lifting him, you will find out that you are lifted too for his sake. I've given this example. Remember during our retreat? My focus is the top of this pulpit. But it's impossible to focus here and not see here. My Bible is not resting here. However, because this is what is supporting this, as I lift this, everything connected to it is lifted too. You see how it happens? Glorify now thy son that thy son may glorify thee. So if God finds out that he's deriving great glory from your life, what happens is that he keeps lifting you for his namesake, empowering you for his namesake, honoring you for his namesake. This is what God does. So when you see the results behind this ministry and what God is doing, I'm teaching you this. For those who just came, for those who are family here, let me tell you the truth. Learn this as a principle. This is not about being humble. It's about being wise. When you try to take God's glory and let men see you, they will clap for you, but that will be the last time. But when you let men see him, 
they will clap for him and it will be your joy to be the one lifting him like a trophy and that applause will continue and remain for as long as you are there it's a wiser bargain the state of your heart place your hand on, on your chest and say purify my heart go ahead pray in one minute purify my heart purify my conscience someone pray in one minute and for those who are following across the globe following on koinonia global go ahead pray purify my heart the first hindrance to coming up hither is a disinterest towards God and spiritual things second the state of your heart hallelujah see many other things I'm not going into them but things like pride and so on and so forth they are byproducts of a corrupted heart an arrival mentality you see that our generation is a proud generation we have to trust God for grace to repent from pride is a cancer it kills Literally, the moment you find yourself beating your chest or asking other people to help you beat your chest and say, well, you see it. It's still the same thing. Can a man receive anything that God did not give? Can a man heal any sick body without the power of God? No. The doctors tell you to swallow the tablets and even they cannot explain fully what happens after you swallow it. That one is between your body and the creator. Because there are times a tablet can decide to fight you. The tablet you say is not a living thing. It can fight you. And it knows where to go in your body and fight you till it kills you. So at that point, it's not medicine and surgery again. It's the creator's help. Is someone listening? That prayer purify my heart must remain your prayer even up until the evening. Let me give you the last key and we're done. What is the final hindrance that stops men from rising higher, being used by God mightily in their generations? Lack of proper mentorship and guidance. Lack of proper mentorship and guidance. You want to listen to this before we pray. Lack of proper mentorship and guidance. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says, to stand in the old path, he says. The ancient path, it calls it 616 Jeremiah. He says, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. Please look at me, believers. There is a path in the spirit that leads to glory and leads to victory. There is a path in the spirit that leads to mediocrity and failure. Are we together now? No matter how desirous you have a good heart, agreed. You have a passion for the things of God, agreed. You will need to be guided. There are many paths in the spirit that lead men to glory. But until you are guided and helped, if you are not helped, you may not get there. There are many sincere people. I wrote something down here and I want you to listen. You will reflect the accuracy or the limitations of those you choose to follow. You will reflect the accuracy or the limitations of those you choose to follow. The implication of followership is that you will eventually be a reflection of the accuracy or the limitations is the reason why God is going to judge teachers because when people place their trust on you and follow you believing you are following Christ by the time you manipulate destroy deceive them the Bible except you've torn it from your Bible the Bible tells us that teachers will have a greater weight of judgment because influence is a trust when people trust you to alter their minds, to shape their understanding. Many of you will get up and make destiny-defining decisions based on the truth you have received now. And if I come here and lie to you and manipulate you and deceive you, you see that now? Look at the multiplier effect. You will teach what you have learned now to someone, maybe your group, maybe some children somewhere. That is the reason why 
as ministers of God, we must stay with God and cry for his mercy so that you don't bring things that destroy people. You can learn the truth and quietly correct yourself, but you would have led to a, a, a wide error. One truth that is not communicated properly can bring a mass dis... I mean, it can, it can impede your progress in the spirit. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 8 from verse 26, the Bible talks to us about a, a eunuch, a Ethiopian eunuch. He was on his way and the Lord spoke to Philip. Let's just read it. Arise and go down to the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Uh -huh. He says, and he arose and went and behold, a man of Utopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Utopians, who had the charge of all her treasure. This was a very serious man and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Next verse. He was returning and sitting in his chariot. He read the book of Isaiah. Uh huh. Next verse. Then the spirit said unto him, Philip now, go near and join that chariot. Verse 30. And Philip ran thither unto him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest what thou readest. That man was reading. What he was reading was true, but he had no understanding. He said, how can I accept some man? My goodness. How can I, except some preacher, except some teacher, should guide me? The Bible says, and he desired that he would come up and sit with him. There are many people whose undoing spiritually today was not a product of rebellion. They only followed the wrong people. There are principles and practices they adopted to their spiritual life and adopted in ministry. Their hearts are sincere but they only followed wrongly. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing prayer. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing the word. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing character and integrity and moral excellence. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing relationships. Look at me. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing growth and transformation. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing wealth and abundance. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing attacks from Satan. They were wrongly mentored into trivializing the value of transformation. You will become a reflection of the accuracy or the limitations of who you choose to follow. In ministry, I've met many people, great people, good people. I remember the earliest memories of this um, was when we were the northern part now in Zaria, Kaduna State, Nigeria, I remember a gentleman who came, I was counseling, and he walked up to me, very arrogant and confident, and I looked at him, I said, wow, this is interesting. And I saw a spirit in a vision now, behind him, just standing. And then I'm looking at this gentleman, and he was explaining a few things. He just said he came so that we we'll agree and pray. And I looked at him. I was seeing what was wrong with him. I was seeing a spirit behind him. And then I politely tried to tell him, my friend, look, I'm seeing something behind you. And he, he shot me down immediately. No, no. Don't believe in those things. There's nothing wrong with me. I just came. I, I said, how do I help this man now? This is me watching this person like I'm watching a television. I'm seeing what is wrong with him. I'm trying to help him. And he's telling me, no, he just came so that we we'll agree. Anyway, I prayed for him. That gentleman woke up like after 15 minutes. And for the next one week, true story, he kept sending me text messages. I said, what is wrong? You've rattled my theology, everything I've been taught. I didn't believe this. Where do I start from now? Because that is like canceling everything I believe. I said, no, you don't have to cancel. Or edit what you believe. Not everything is wrong. But there are some things that are nonsense in the world of the spirit. You see that? <laughs> what do you believe about God? What do you not believe about God? What do you believe about Satan? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about growth? What do you believe about prosperity? What do you believe about poverty? What do you believe about success, victory? What do you believe about defeat? 
Listen carefully. What do you believe about fasting? What do you believe about prayer? What do you believe about consecration? What do you believe about increase? It matters how you are mentored. When God wants to help a man, after you encounter Jesus, he grants you the opportunity to sit under the grace of a teaching priest who loves Jesus, has accurate understanding of the word, and loves you. Three things. He must love Jesus, he must have accurate understanding of the word, and he must love you. Because any of these three that goes wrong, you are in trouble. If he does not love God, even if he loves you, you are still in trouble. You see that? Because he would download errors sincerely. The source is wanting. If he loves God and he does not love you, he will have, he will be cold-fitted towards getting the truth across to you. If he loves God and he loves you but does not have access to the truth, he will be like a sincere driver who says, enter the car, but I'm a learner. That's not wickedness. That's ignorance. He just wants to help you, especially when you are carrying all your children. Say, you and all your children come into the car. Your big luxurious bosses, he said, you just come in and be very comfortable. You can even go to bed while I drive. I'm learning, but I think I'm smart enough to navigate through the roads. You see that? It takes more than a good heart. It takes understanding. I have watched with humility sincere people being destroyed because of the demon of their ignorance. Your ignorance is always higher than you. You will be a slave to ignorance until the day you cry like the nation of Israel, I am tired. And you declare an exodus out of that pharaoh of ignorance. You are learning the things you are learning now. Some of you never knew that success can destroy as much as failure. When Satan wants to bring failure to destroy you and you reject it, he will bring success. The most important thing is that he wants you destroyed. How is not his business? There are many breakthroughs that did not come from God. They were trapped by Satan because he knows that you have not been trained to manage success. So he will rush it to you and you will receive it thinking it is breakthrough and that becomes the reason for your death. It is not only the cross that can kill, a crown can kill too. There are many kings that died from their throne. They didn't die on the cross. Satan wants you to die, whether on the cross or on the throne. The difference is purpose. The one who dies on the cross dies towards getting to the throne. The one who dies on the throne dies because he's a fool. Herod died and immediately worms at him. Nebuchadnezzar lifted up himself in pride and he became an animal for years. But Jesus died on the cross but that became the passage, the new and living way. You see that now? So, as we wrap up this morning, we have an evening session and I must let you rest now and prepare. This is a very, it's called a prophetic convergence. All our discussion was verse 1. After this, I look. That's all I've been saying. This, these four words. After this, I look. It is your responsibility to go and find the this that has distracted you. Use this opportunity before evening. For someone is, after the business success, I stopped looking. You have to repent. It's time to look. After the ministerial strides, God is calling you. If you want to get to this second realm, chapter one has happened to you. Chapter two has happened to you. Reminded of Isaiah chapter six verse one. Isaiah starts with a powerful prophecy by a true prophet himself. But by the time we get to chapter 6 and verse 1, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, what must die for you to see? Because you see, this whole scriptures is about seeing again. After this, I looked. For someone, this will be your version. After he died, I saw. After pride died. After lust died after carelessness died and don't say it does not matter if it is if you want to last you have to pay attention to this are we together this it does not matter is a spirit of carelessness it destroys people i don't pray but it doesn't matter i don't fast but it doesn't matter i don't love god i don't give there are some of you who don't give you see giving 
it's not the only key that, that makes you prosperous. Your value, your understanding. But giving connects you to the spiritual forces that bring you the assistance. I wish I had time. It's one thing, oh dear. The power to prosper has nothing to do with money. It is the power that advances men. You cannot go forward if you don't have it. You can have money without the power to prosper, but it will never bless you because wisdom brings wealth, but strength retains wealth. When it has to do with retainership, it's not wisdom again, it's strength. He says strong men retain. That is why you can get and it can leave. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord mentorship. This is what you are receiving right now. For someone, you sacrifice the time you would have used doing certain things and you are sitting under this grace. From morning and even up until evening, you will be surprised how many years you have redeemed. Just sitting here right now. And I mean what I'm saying. How many years that heaven is rejoicing because perhaps for someone, you are the only one in your family who has had an opportunity to come this far with God. Now you are redeeming it. Did the Bible not say, walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise? It says, redeeming the time. How do you redeem the time? By knowing early what the will of God is. Because when you know what the will of God is, you will act in keeping with that will and you will redeem time. Confusion is one of the ways that Satan aborts the value of time in your life. He keeps you moving left and right while time goes. That's why when God shows up, he brings both restoration and speed. These are the two ways God corrects issues of time. Because if you lose money, you can get it back if you have time. But if you don't have time, even if you have wisdom, you cannot use it. The value of everything you receive is that you have it enough time to execute it. A dying man does not pray for wisdom. A dying man does not pray for favor. A dying man does not pray for connections. He prays for time. Ask Hezekiah. Because every other thing finds its value when there is time. So God brought this prophetic convergence because for some of you, you have wasted 30 years already. 40 years already. 50 years already. And if you keep going the way you are going, you are about to add another 10 years. And God has come by his mercy. That something needs to be done. Need to redeem time. Some of you, by God's prophetic blueprint, you would have been a prophet by now. But because from the time you got born again, you did not have the privilege of quality mentorship. And you kept listening to a lot of nonsense. You've been going around. Now you found out that you thought you were moving forward. But in the presence of higher light, you found out you've just been roaming around the same room. You've not even gone out of the room for 10 years. But not to worry. This is why he gives speed. This is why he restores. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Did you hear what I was singing now? It may be a special number for you, but I'm not a musician. I'm pounding something into your spirit, man. By your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemy. Time may have gone, but I'm in the presence of the resurrection and the life. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. 
the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrected. One more time. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. We're about to pray. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, here it is, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray. The grace to look and to keep looking. Looking beyond success. Looking beyond failures. You may be a champion but still look. It is only those who look that leave. It is only those who look that leave. I like you to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Every distraction, every impediment to my rising in the spirit. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Complacency that has come as a result of my achievements, ministerial achievements, financial achievements, career achievements, family achievements, in the name of Jesus. After these, I still look. After these, I still look. After these, I still look. I look in prayer. I look in fasting. I look in the word. I look through consecration. After this, I look. Someone pray. In spite of the healing anointing, I still pray. I still fast. In spite of the commendations, I will still strive to know Him more, to love Him more, to live for Him. Hallelujah. We're wrapping up. After these things, I looked. After these crowns, after these challenges for someone, it doesn't matter what the this is, good or bad. If you have looked at it for a while, take your eyes away from it. Come up here that starts with looking hither, there is a higher realm. I've operated the prophetic, but there is a higher realm. I've operated the apostolic office, but there is a higher realm. God has blessed me financially, but there is a higher realm. God has helped my children, but there is a higher realm. Someone who desires more, cry the last prayer for this morning. More, more, more. More, more fire, more grace. Someone pray. Greater appetite for spiritual things. Loving Him more than my necessary food. Go ahead and pray. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I see you, the more I want to see you, Jesus, more of you. Jesus, more of you. Helper, more of you, Redeemer, more of you, Savior, more of you, the 
more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. While standing, let me just do two things. I just want to give a word about tonight and then just one more instruction and then we'll have um, the altar call and then we're done. Hallelujah. Tonight will be our final general session. I'll be taking the other parts and we're trusting God to be a time where we experience the move of the Spirit tonight. Be praying for the sick who will be ministering to us. Let me request everyone get the prayer requests of everyone you know and then yours too. Come by faith. Ushers, please take note so that when we come, we'll be able to receive this at a point in the service. I believe in the ministry of intercession. We're going to be praying over our requests. You've heard the testimonies that have come. And for those who are connecting across the globe, um, We'll start five, let's make it five UK time on the dot um, so that we'll be able to cover much. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll just have, once we come in, we'll go straight to the point, cut a lot of things so that we can have time. We'll just minister and then we'll have Sinach come bless us. And then afterwards, <laughs> hallelujah. Once that happens, we'll get straight to the word and we're trusting God to have a glorious time this evening by the grace of God. Make sure you come with your heart opened. Hallelujah. Now, there are, I know that there are so many people. Please, PR, let's find out. I don't want any space whatsoever. No chair should be empty. While there are so many people, we've had to stop. Literally so many people. So if there are still more spaces, I'm sure that most people maybe were at work or so. If there's any room, then we'll open more. If there are people who we left outside, please don't feel offended. Um, we had to limit everything because if we open and announce everything, even if we use a stadium, it will not be enough. So, um, But the point is, I want you to come with your heart hungry, ready to receive. Hallelujah. We've introduced this come up here. There's something else I want to show you tonight. And we'll trust God for a mighty move of the Spirit and for... All your loved ones who are trusting God for any kind of miracle, I want you to release your faith with them in the name of Jesus Christ. For all our precious workers, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, because most, most of our workers, I'm sure that um, you would be communicated uh, because most of the workers have been walking around, some right from yesterday, and whilst others are going to take a break, most of the workers are still around up until evening. It's usually a stretch for them. Um, we've, we've made um, arrangements for food for the workers. So please make sure that um, um, I'm sure that the leaders will direct. Perhaps when I'm done, if they need any direction, please. Workers, listen carefully so that you have it. We love everybody. Don't worry if you are not a worker. Just know that I, Joshua Selman, on behalf of Jesus, the Son of the living God, that I love you with all my heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll also, take, we'll also take some time. There are a few people we're expecting in the evening. We'll take the time to just acknowledge people uh, more intentionally. I didn't want us to um, stretch beyond this morning. Um, then hopefully by evening, I would say another word over the sound of revival. I know that um, the, the hall can only take so much people. The um, first direct arena can only take 12,000 and it's exhausted completely. So we've been trying to walk around. I mean, I know some of you, the workers, you don't even have, you've not gotten a place. Please just be patient. We're seeing what we can do. If it means getting another hall, that's what we did in Canada. All the halls for US, Canada, UK, it's all filled up. In fact, we filled up days. Um, so right now, for Canada, we're fortunate enough to have, and you know, there's an overflow attached to it. So we've been able to get an overflow for 5,000 more people. Um, 
but for this other place we are trusting God so just pray with us and please be patient it's not um, intentional you know that once you hold meetings like this it just goes to tell you how hungry people are for God are we together so we'll do our best particularly for some of you who are here and you know you've been wanting to register to become part of the workforce or you know part of those who attend on site um, please just give us some time we're really working trying to put all the factors we can put together and we're having many options on the table including visiting multiple cities if need be I hope who knows maybe God will answer your prayer and will come to a city amen praise the name of the Lord have you been blessed you need Jesus let me make an altar call I don't take for granted any opportunity that makes for the gathering of God's people I believe with all my heart that someone who came here this morning you are in this place right now and whilst you heard me speak particularly when I began to speak about the disinterest for spiritual things the Holy Ghost began to convict you if that is you you are saying apostle do not end this session the morning without giving me a chance to know Jesus to love him and then to serve him or perhaps you you're born again but you've not been serious with God and you're saying I want to rededicate my life to Jesus I'm going to make five counts one to five wherever you are very boldly unashamedly so I want you to leave your seat and come and stand right before me here when I count five I will begin the prayer don't wait for anyone to be the first very boldly come and stand I begin my counting now one is there someone coming Two, come. Koinonia, give them a big God bless you. Three, win that war finally, once and for all. I want to make it right with Jesus. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. No, we do not condemn you. It doesn't matter what you have done or what you have not done. Please come. Jesus is willing to give you a new beginning. Young, old, male, female, come. And for those who are watching by television, those who are connecting from across the globe, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. As I pray over this once, I want you to connect by faith. And this can be a new day for you. This can be the beginning of your best days. All of you in front, thank you very much. You'll be given a card by the counselors. Please, I want you to hold that card and after the prayer you'd be requested to fill it legibly you will have a few people the counselors will be having a word with you shortly I want to thank you for this bold decision thank you I see uh, so many people parents coming even with their children thank you very very much I'd like you to say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is destroyed I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen let me pray for you father I speak over your precious people I love them with all my heart and I decree and declare based on the authority of Scripture your sins are forgiven I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God and I declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen now all of you please I want you to look at me may I please request that you move this way you see the counselors waving the placard all of you in concert they will have a word with you just for a minute or two and then you're back let's honor them as they go keep clapping let's honor them as they go
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So for one last time, it starts by, let me advise you from 4.30, you should be here. Let's do our best to start five on the dot. Koinonia Global, five on the dot. We're here. So by 4.45, I think the media will be ready. And then five on the dot, we get straight to the point so that we'll have enough time to do much. This is the last and final session. Uh, and then the workers, remember that we have uh, workers only meeting on to life. You are able to sort that and then you step into your rest. You believe that? So that's my encouragement. And that also includes our global family. Our global family is following. Uh, all the other account details are there. Even if you're not able to pay to our UK account, you know, the other account expression, US, your account is there. UK, your account is there. And then, of course, back home, um, everything, the details are there. You already have it. I don't like to talk about money. People over pound about money. Once you train believers well, if they are well trained, they know that giving is part and parcel of the believer's life. Give us individuals, give us your corporation, but make sure you do it in love. One of my dear sons will say, the size of your seed matters, but the motivation, the motif behind it is of greater essence. And so please make sure you don't um, frown and no, 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 no. If you don't have a revelation, no problem. You will not go to hell. You sit down. The day you learn, you can give. Praise the name of the Lord. But I want you to know that God is in the business of lifting people. It's a prophetic convergence. And for all who have come, um, Apostle Arayomi, um, Reverend Akila, Pastor Petrock, and every other man of God, if you're here, we did not recognize you. Please, my apologies. I'm sure that we'll have a concise list by evening and we'll give honor where a house of honor and will not trivialize any grace that is found and represented here. Thank you very much. Please rise. Um, any announcement? Okay. Oh, I should just step back. I think I'll just step back and allow you. Okay, so you... Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank you. So just two announcements. Number one is representatives from each department will be required to collect the foods that uh, the house have for horse. So it will be given through a specific facilitator. And then number two is um, we will be required to all go out at some point to check out so that we can check in again properly for the second session. It's going to be an overflow. So we want to ensure that everybody legitimately registered is uh, issued their seats first before other persons. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. And then um, let me add, please, no eating in the hall. Let me plead that when you collect your meals, just sit once you have your meals for the workers. Those who are not workers, you can, I'm sure most people already would just sit, pray, just hang around, grab a meal, and then be around. Please cooperate with our PR people. They'll be as loving, as excellent as possible. Please, let's work early enough so that we check in people early so that they don't have to um, be waiting outside. They can come in and pray. You can give them worship. The media can give them worship. You can play a message, something that edifies their spirits so that we don't um, waste their time. So make sure that um, once you collect your meal, please let me request no throwing of papers, no throwing of bottles of water, bottles of drinks where irresponsible people and we shouldn't do that to litter the church. You may do well. I'm sure that there are authorized places outside where you'll be allowed to go and eat. Let me plead with you to please cooperate with us on this wise so that we do not litter the church and then make the work difficult for ushers again and our aesthetics people. Have you been blessed? Father, thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We pray that that which we have heard this morning, this afternoon, will remain in our spirits. It will fuel us for higher levels in the spirit. And Lord, as we converge in a few hours, we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you'll be glorified in our lives. Let your glory rest upon us in higher levels. And to Jesus be all the praise. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely.
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.